All righty. Welcome to the IPFS Q4 All Hands, talking about our accomplishments in Q3, our Q3 challenges, priorities looking into Q4, and then having time for everyone to present their OKRs. So some, some fun numbers from Q3 as they represent the work that we've done. Um, first, looking at our IPFS ecosystem, and we now have a beautiful updated uh, ecosystem diagram from Akita. Thank you so much, Akita. It is beautiful. Um, we, we need to get a better protocol for updating this and enabling others to update it because I think there's actually way more things that, that need to be integrated into this than there already are. And uh, I've added one and moving things around is surprisingly difficult if you are not a, um, a sketch master. So I totally was just cutting things and taking screenshots. Uh, but there's really awesome growth happening here. A ton of new, um, new betas launched in Q2 and Q3, and um, another, a number of other groups are announcing kind of new, new programs and projects that they're doing as well. If we look at the IPFS public network, there's been a very happy, well-supported cadence of nodes on the network. You can see we have the, the delightful, like, um, you know, day usage graph where people are using IPFS more on the weekdays, less on the weekends. So we see a very happy um, kind of public network space here. And it's also um, kind of consistently updating to 4.22 when that one rolled out. Um, and this is in the order of about thousands, sorry, hundreds of thousands of nodes. Um, and so we, the, the public network here, I would say is, uh, is looking quite happy, quite consistent and um, kind of well supported in, in accessing the IPFS network. Looking at monthly contributors, you can see that we moved up in, uh, in advance of uh, IPFS camp. There was definitely a whole ton of contribution happening in uh, IPFS repos and then post that, like people um, kind of sharing ideas and stuff. And then a lot of folks went on the holiday in August, very classic uh, holiday time of year. So uh, we have a little bit of a, of a drop back down but we um, should aim to see that move back up in the September, October timeframe as people get back into the swing of things there. Um, but generally, monthly contributors continuing to, to continue on. And then finally, a little bit of data from the IPFS gateway, um, looking, integrating over the amount of data that we are sending, serving from the community gateways. Um, we're seeing about, about a terabyte of data every day um, being served to people trying to access the gateway, or about 6.76 terabytes per week, which is awesome, which means that a lot of people are, um, you know, this is kind of the other side of the coin from people participating in the IPFS network, is people who are utilizing data and content that live within the IPFS network, but via HTTP. So, nasty stuff happening there. All right, zooming out from this particular quarter into the bigger picture of what we um, prioritized for 2019 in our yearly roadmap, um, we kind of had had six main objectives around production readiness, supporting package managers, scaling, building the community, testing, and I guess also supporting the community. Slightly different than than uh, the IPFS camp version of uh, of building the community. And we've already checked off a lot of these things, which is awesome. Um, we hosted IPFS camp. We launched Proto School. Um, we have awesome new features within the IPFS protocol that make us more production ready. And we've also intentionally crossed out some of these where look like we, this is a short quarter coming up and we need to focus. And there's some of these things that are, are not a priority and um, an area that we're going to continue choosing to, to push toward in Q4 so that we can focus our time on landing some of these areas that have either a little bit missing or where we were in flight on this thing and we think it's really important. And so some, um, particular ones to calm out are the testing and benchmarking, making sure that we have like a great performance benchmark and testing harness across IPFS so that we can roll out new releases really confidently. Um, that's a really big focus area for us. Um, documentation revamp is another big focus area. We're excited to continue pushing on that and do so in a way that we're getting good feedback from uh, people in the community about how we can continue improving. Um, and then there's also significant work to do on meeting scalability and performance needs for package managers and really landing those in the protocol itself so that people can benefit from them. Um, and Unix FSV 1.5 instead of Unix FSV 2 is, is a part of that. 
All right, um, looking back at Q3, as part of putting ourselves in the context of where we are in the year, we accomplished a ton, a ton around scaling the network. The gateways became significantly more uh, performant and well monitored and um, more stable and serving many, many use cases here. Production readiness also increased a ton around th getting this, the test ground work um, solidified and on a good path toward, toward development and, and usage. And the, the list just goes on. This was a super, super busy quarter, and I have three pages worth of all of the things that were accomplished. And these are the important things that we really want to highlight, um, not necessarily the things that we put in our OKRs, but the, the really valuable um, things that we shipped this quarter. That's huge. Like This is the by far the longest list I've had to make so far. We've done a ton of stuff this quarter, and it's all really important. Um, and so I think snaps to the entire team for that level of focus and also pat yourselves on the back because we've put in a ton of effort into this and we're seeing it happen. Like we're really landing this work outward as well. Um, there's a ton of stuff here as well around package managers, documentation, and then sharing with the community. This was our most communicative quarter yet. Like I think we had a average like a blog post every two weeks or something like that, sharing all of the content out of IPFS camp. Um, communicating with our community about new releases, um, like generally being very present and, and making sure that we're, we're very transparent about um, the work that's happening and the, and the work that, that goes on in order to make that a reality. Um, status update on the kind of five project areas. Um, super, super successful quarter. I'd say um, giving like the high level viewpoint, we definitely were kind of on track and rearing ahead, definitely on gateways and on our documentation work. Um, we're making progress, but still have, have room for improvement, both kind of on the proper project operation side and the package manager side, both of which are, are have some um, dependencies on our testing infra work and making sure that we can um, ship our improvements to the community, utilize our new release process, um, and, and actually make the IPFS network better by validating ahead of launch. Um, what that's going to look like. And so we've been pouring a ton more energy and effort into this test ground effort to make sure that it can solve those needs for us um, and kind of unblock these, these other chunks of work that we really want to land. Um, and kind of a, a retrospective as always, like we don't get to everything we want to do in the quarter. Um, we had high expectations. We pushed super hard. We did a ton, but we didn't get to everything. And some of those things um, need landing work in Q4. So that's that's kind of the core takeaway here. We had um, a couple. We have a number of in-flight projects where we're we're in the midst of the struggle. We have we have done a ton of work, but we, in order to see the benefit and to really deliver to our community and the people who are utilizing IPFS, um, we need to to finish on landing things. So making sure that it actually makes it all the way to the person who needs to benefit from it. Um, another takeaway here is Q4 is really short. It really does fly fast, um, especially with travel and events and holidays. Like this time is going to go very quickly for us and for everyone in the the, the community, um, all of the people who are building on top of IPFS. So let's let's make that time count and and spike towards the beginning of the quarter on getting these things out the door and landed, um, because otherwise uh, <laughs> we'll we'll realize that people become less and less accessible as the quarter goes on in terms of helping us get things done. All right, so the high level of our most important Q4 endeavors kind of broke it into the top five and then the, the next five. Um, our, our main areas are around bringing new people into the IPFS project and um, helping uh, more, more people contribute to areas like testing infra, gateway support, and um, Go IPFS and our documentation effort. So these really important endeavors that we took on um, last quarter let's bring people into those efforts as well and help them contribute to the most important problems that we're facing as a project. Um, then we have kind of two um, paired goals around testing infra. One is that testing infra exists and is able to validate and, and unblock our next release. And then that we're, we're able to make significant improvements to the IPFS DHT using testing infra to validate that that work is going to um, perform the way we expect it to, and improve the, the experience of using IPFS. Um, we also have a goal for our, uh, our Bifrost team, our gateway slash pinbots slash clusters slash preload nodes, um, to be prepared for scale. 
um, scale in the past has sometimes come a bit as a surprise. And let's make sure that um, the next time that scale appears, that we're, we're really able to, to respond to that and, and be ready for uh, increases, even if we're, we're not in control of them. And then finally, preparing for 2020. This is, uh, we have a lot more growth to do next year, and we need to be setting a, a farther vision around um, the work that we're, we're going to achieve. So there's also carving a little bit of time out this quarter, um, especially in the project, project operations group around planning and, and training and setting ourselves up well. Um, we have a, a lot of other areas that we, we think we can really make a big difference this quarter, but um, keeping, keeping it focused around, around the top endeavors is, is really important because uh, if we have too many, we're gonna run out of time to do them all. All right, so that leads us into IPFS Q4 OKRs. Um, we kind of have three P0s, which are um, three of the areas I, I just mentioned, um, and two P1s. And I'm going to have uh, the captains of each of our working groups index through here to give updates on how we are going to achieve these, these ambitious objectives for our, for our work as a project this quarter and tell us the, the OKRs they've defined to help measure and do that. So I think first we have David. All right, thank you, Molly. Can everyone hear me well? Can I, uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm using like a very complex double device setup to make sure I can speak to everyone. Uh, cool, so uh, thank you so much, Molly. Uh, so this is the test infra slash test ground project OKRs. Um, as you know, like test ground is like one of the most like top uh, priorities for this quarter and for the whole project and also for the LPDB project in like midterm goal is also to make sure that like it's a project that can be used by other peer to peer projects in the ecosystem. Um, right now the team is really small, but like, we have uh, very ambitious plans and we do intend to ship something this quarter that is usable uh, by CoIPFS and then later by just IPFS. And this goes from having like the specific tests in which we want uh, that we we want to implement uh, to make us comfortable, to make us confident um, that we can then ship GraphiFS um, with the quality bar that we we want. From having the test run like implemented and like running with cloud infrastructure, so that we can like learn uh, run large scale tests uh, and, and so on. And so it is um, a very ambitious very fast moving project. And so the OKRs are more of a projection from what is listed on the trail board. Um, and, and like, so the, this slide, what it shows is, you can see our goals for the quarter on the OKRs, the, the really like the day-to-day -day operation, the day-to-day -day activities will be represented in this trail board. And, and this is actually kind of like a joint venture between the IPFS team, the lead peer to peer team and the research team as like everyone is kind of like contributing with resources um, to make this happen. One of the things that we are moving as fast as possible to get into like a very good state is to make sure that the project crystallizes enough that other people can also contribute, not by necessarily just building the thing, but also by writing the tests. So expect to hear from us um, two to three weeks from now especially the JS, IPFS, and the GoIPFS teams to invite you to write some of the tests that you are writing for the core implementations, um, but using test ground and like using test ground to help you debug like test new features and so on. And so, uh, yeah, I think this is like the brief version of the OKRs. Like you can read it <laughs> all or ask questions. I was curious whether you had another slide, but you didn't. You think I'd be able <laughs> yeah. to see that in the slides viewer, but I didn't think of that. I do have another slide, but after your slide. <laughs> cool. Thank you, David. Awesome. So, well, this is our, our P0, go. our P0 is P0. We'd make it a P minus one if we could. Um, so definitely a, a focus <laughs> here on um, you know when needed in order to unblock this effort and make sure that we were able to deliver this both for our own development and for Kind of community stability and really hitting this production readiness goal, um, we'll, we'll definitely be, be chatting with folks across the project about how to make sure we unblock this on time so that we can utilize it. All right, um, looking into the project operations group, I think Dietrich, David, and I are going to tag team this, so it should be, should be exciting. Um, 
the, the first area that I'll mention is preparing for 2020 growth. And this is um, focusing on things like helping onboard new contributors, as we mentioned, um, and also doing 2020 planning, um, investing in strategies for, for how to continue growing things like our community, um, our adoption, and um, just general usability and focus of, of the IPFS project. Um, and so that, that charting a course for 2020 is happening this quarter. Um, shortly we'll be opening up opening up a place for um, people to present ideas for um, where we should be focusing in 2020 that can feed into our 2020 road mapping process and, um, and kind of direct us. The aim is to have that, a very first draft of that roadmap by November 16th. So um, early in the quarter, we do not have all that much time. Um, and so looking forward to, to getting people's input so that we can um, really spike on that um, probably the, the first week of November is when we'll um, have like a, kind of a first like chewing on top of people's feedback. Um, so on my agenda to, to help with that a lot. All right, David, you wanted to talk through the chunk in here that's related to research. Sorry, I might have pressed the wrong button. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yes, thank you for passing the next slide. Um, essentially, uh, there are three key results on the IPFS project operations that are just a projection of something that is also listed on the research team OKRs, specifically under the ResNet lab umbrella, so the Resilient Networks lab umbrella. Um, if you haven't heard about ResNet lab, uh, it's a very new research group within PL Research, and uh, its charter is to focus on solving big, meaty, chunky, chubby, uh, large, challenging problems on like networks in general, like scaling um, things like the DHT, making sure that there is solutions for privacy preserving um, networks, um, that we have new ways and we explore new ways to do like pub sub into even larger skills and so on. And so we have been doing a lot of work in the last month in terms of like just capturing all the open problems and we are working towards getting um, our fees so that we can invite other researchers, other collaborators to tackle those open problems from the IPFS and the peer to peer ecosystem. But there is more. And so we want to level up our game in both project teams, IPFS and the peer to peer, when it comes to research. So we want to help the teams ship some of the research work that's been going on, like the Merkle CRDT, and create a new gossip sub paper. Um, we, we, we believe and like we have been having a lot of conversations where we miss some kind of, we miss some of these artifacts in order to involve more people because right now a lot of these things are in code and they don't, do not have evaluations that people can then like stack against other solutions or even can reason about to understand the architecture. So that's like one thing that is going to be a big investment. And this goes for the Merkle CRDT, the gossip sub. And also we want to revisit the idea of like uh, writing a lead peer-to-peer -peer paper and a new iteration of an IPFS paper. Not necessarily the next version of the previous IPFS paper, it might be uh, an IPFS paper that explains the current architecture, what is possible, what is not possible. And given that we are working so much on the test ground, use the test ground to take up like some qualitative and quantitative uh, evaluation of the system that then we can publish at some, some conference. Um, and so, there is like three main, actually there is like four. Uh, the, the fourth area of work is the one that you saw on my previous slide about like, so it's the ResNet lab supporting the creation of test ground. But like the three main areas here is getting research published, like getting our um, research published out, um, getting like a catalog of like IPFS open problems and start establishing bridges with research labs so that we can invite her, them to like tackle on tackle these open problems with us. Um, and uh, last but not the least, very important and very exciting, is preparing a research intensive workshop for 2020 Q1. Um, um, the date so far should be end of January, but like what essentially what this workshop will be is like a two to three day workshop where we can prepare with a very extensive, very comprehensive literature review um, that covers the, 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 the focus area of the open problems that we identify throughout the quarter. And we will um, work on getting not only the literature review, but also summaries of that literature review so that it's easy for all the project teams to digest that very quickly. And also 
provide some kind of like straw man solutions, some kind of like proposals um, that are very easy to, to reason about um, and that can be then used to drive the conversation through other workshops so that then we can uh, yield, that we can like produce some new protocol designs for IPFS and OE peer to peer. So there's a lot of work here. Um, <laughs> and, and you can see uh, kind of like between test round um, and all of these like three other main objectives for like this team, there's, there's a lot of things to do. Um, but, but yeah, like, all of them seem super valuable and super important. And, um, and, and, and like the test ground will always come first compared to all these other objectives um, as it was an identified priority in, in the last few weeks. Like an, um, it was a priority that was like identified as being the main priority for both project teams. Um, but, but yeah, we'll, we will be like focusing on these other areas as well. Cool. Thank uh, you very much, Javid. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> cool. Um, Dietrich, are you around to talk about uh, IPFS collaborations and day-to-day -day ops? I am. Hello, Wunderbar. Uh, project operations group, a lot of stuff packed in, segmented. I'm going to cover the next two segments. The first is our collaborations work. Uh, in, the, in the spirit of we have a short quarter and we have to prioritize the most important things. The P0 for this quarter for uh, the collaborations is to ship Woo! browser integrations. We are finally at the point after, uh, at, at this point, um, in some cases, over a year worth of, of negotiation and collaboration and conversation and development uh, ready to discuss what a V1 looks like for, for Brave and uh, a timely shipping of Opera uh, this quarter. So the highest priority for us is really going to be helping those uh, be, get out the door and be communicated and shared and uh, really help close that last mile of access for um, IPFS in terms of people being able to get uh, access to the, the network uh, it, at least a little bit more easily from a, from a browser today. Uh, not the full decentralization, the full distributed web that, uh, that we want, but a really significant step forward towards there and really setting us up for a 2020 that can help us make even larger steps towards that, that D-Web in the browser world that we want to get to. Uh, some of the other things that we have in, in Collabs land are uh, increasingly communicating more and more often about the collaborations that we have, expect more blog posts around browser work, uh, ENS, uh, some of the uh, other collaborations work that we're doing. Uh, one of the things that came out in the last quarter was the Filecoin grants program and the LibP2P bounties and grants program. We've had a grants program in IPFS for some time, but it's kind of been on the down low, uh, direct relationships with different collaborations that, and collaborators, partners that we've had. So this quarter we want to launch a more public facing IPFS grants program. This will probably be initially focused on smaller grant opportunities uh, and, and, and um, focusing probably on some existing relationships that we have, but this will be a much more public presence and in the hopes of really building up a stronger, uh, more public IPFS grants program for next year. Uh, and uh, additionally, we stood up in this last quarter a collaborations triage and pipeline process. Uh, this is something that Arkady and I have put together in, in Airtable. I've been walking through these steps of what the, uh, what the different discrete components and parts and pieces and stages of our collaborations are. It's, it's fascinating because we have so many different collaborations and they're so different from one another. Uh, sometimes really small open source stuff and then sometimes uh, larger, you know, longer time frame partnerships with much uh, uh, organizations that, that do or don't share both how, uh, way, how we operate as an organization, but also values. You have this, this weird interplay of, of relationships that's fun, fun to manage. Uh, we'll have weekly, weekly uh, triages that you, uh, for internal PL folks to join to talk about those collaborations throughout the quarter. Uh, the second part of, that I'll be covering are the, for project operations, are the day-to-day -day operations leveling up. So last, last quarter, we, we did a lot of work around kind of the systemization of um, how, how we operate the two core implementations. Uh, that is pretty much stood up and going. And the next steps are how we operate day-to-day -day as a team. Uh, Molly's gonna be driving some explorations of 
uh, trainings and resources and tooling, maybe bringing in external groups to talk to us, and um, that, that should be interesting. The, the kind of the, one of the things that we wanted to focus on in the desktop and browsers and what we called like the maintenance work last quarter was testing. And we spent a lot of time looking into what testing was needed, where the gaps were, uh, how we could better support the core implementations and understanding when problems were, were uh, you know, merged and where problems arose in the, the, the fantastic topology between web UI, uh, desktop and companion, or any other thing that talks to web UI, and the two, uh, and sometimes more, core implementations. Um, so the goal for this quarter is going to be standing up end-to-end uh, -end tests uh, for a variety of file sizes, for a variety of permutations of that topology, so that we have uh, as close to real-time understanding of when regressions, both functional and performance, are landed. Uh, it's a it's a short quarter, and that's a pretty it's a pretty aggressive goal, but we think it's really important, especially in this uh, idea of let's figure out how strong a foundation we can set up this quarter in order to set us up for 2020. So we have better visibility uh, into those problems and lower uh, overhead and maintenance moving forward. Sounds great. Thanks. Thank you very much, Teacher. All right, Bifrost, previously Hello. known as IPFS as a service. Take it away, Ollie. It's had, ma it's had many names. Uh, Bifrost is the code name for essentially what you could most easily think of as a reboot of the IPFS infrastructure team. Um, so our mission is that the IPFS infrastructure provides a great service to the community. So that includes uh, the previous quarter that was really focused on the gateways, but this quarter that's going to include the gateways, the bootstrap nodes, and the preload nodes that serve JS IPFS. So we set ourselves some objectives on the next slide. Um, given that uh, the test ground project is still in its infancy, yet we run significant large public infrastructure for IPFS, our first objective is to inform and improve the core IPFS development. So we've got access to data about how IPFS performs at scale, but we are not making the best use of it to inform our development process yet. Uh, so we are going to be doing things like uh, making sure that gateway traffic is mirrored to a staging environment and that staging environment is regularly updated to run the latest Go IPFS and where possible that's going to be entirely CI and CD driven. So it'll always be up to date with master, run for 24 hours and then we'll have useful metrics from Prometheus um, in Grafana dashboards where you can do AB comparisons with the uh, production node versus the uh, current current master. Uh, we're going to make sure that all devs have access to the IPFS logs from production and staging infrastructure. This is, this is almost the case now, but due to boring access access issues, not always the case. So it seems like a, the, the bigger issue behind this is socializing the act of doing it, making sure that everyone knows that they can see the logs and is encouraged to do it regularly. Because the more eyes that we have on those things, the more anomalies we will spot. Uh, we're going to make sure that um, nightly and on-demand PPROF profiles are published to a shared shared repo. So this is taking, um, tracing, this is a Go-specific thing, but running the PPROF tool on Go IPFS unlocks a lot of useful information about how IPFS is performing at scale. And right now, we only tend to take those dumps um, reactively when something has gone wrong, but we could learn a lot more if there was just a nice habit of publishing these regularly and that they were linkable and shareable amongst the team. Uh, the next objective is that our infrastructure scales to meet demand. This is essentially important maintenance needs to keep happening. Um, the IPFS infrastructure has been running for quite a while now and some things are running well and some things are still legacy and need to be rebooted. So uh, our top objective is that the bootstrap and preload nodes are rebuilt, documented, monitored and alerted on. Um, essentially, they're made shiny and new. We take, take down the old ones. And our second, our second um, objective there is that the SolarNet nodes are decommissioned. And if you've been following IPFS for a long time, you've probably heard of the SolarNet boxes. They are our original gateways and bootstrap nodes. And they've been running for a very long time. And they are now under maintained. They are pets, not cattle. And we need to finally lay them to rest and reboot them on shiny new infrastructure. 
And the next slide, please. Ah, cool. Um, so our metrics are reliable and our alerts are actionable. This is this is the dream for this quarter. Um, we are producing a lot of metrics, uh, but they could be more reliable. We occasionally get issues where uh, alerts are fired, but they are not meaningful. And we need to solve those two problems just on the lowest level so that my heart rate goes down. And, and and a more community focused level so that we can start to publish these metrics more publicly because we know that they're accurate and that they're collected in a way that makes it easy to publish them both without too much effort on our part and also like safely in a privacy privacy preserving way. Um, uh, we're going to make sure that the PromQL queries for our gateway service level indicators are audited and in version control. Um, these are things that we worked on in the last quarter. They tell us how well our gateways are running in production and they're vital, but so far the understanding of them lives in one person's head and we would like to spread that knowledge around the team. So first step is to get that important, important code, important code into source control and have it audited. Uh, and then for once you've got service level indicators, these are the, the numbers that tell us when things are, how things are performing. Then we can define service level objectives. These are the thresholds in those graphs, the cutoff points beyond which we say this is bad performance and below which we say this is good performance. So um, the, the next step to, set, to being able to say that the infrastructure is running well, we have to define what running well means. And that is done through these things. So the goal for this quarter is to have them defined and agreed upon amongst the team. And the final objective is users know what to expect from the IPFS.io services. So right now we run a large amount of important public infrastructure that lets people access IPFS, be it the bootstrappers, which are fundamental to anybody using IPFS, or the gateways, which is the upgrade path that let people access IPFS over HTTP. Without these two pieces, like IPFS would be much weaker. And so this is important work, but right now it's very opaque to the end user as to what they can expect from this service. It's, you know, it's P2P and decentralized, so it's always kind of run your own nodes and you look after your own thing. But these, they, these, you can't run an IPFS network successfully without these pieces of the puzzle. So we need to get a lot better at telling people what they can and can't do with it. Um, and then just as a uh, helping people understand what is going on when things go wrong, visibility and failure is super important. And so sometimes you'll request CIDs from the network that just can't be found in the pathological case you'll request a CID that just doesn't exist no one's hosting it anymore that request will time out when you access it from the gateways and right now that leaves you at a dead end it's just a vanilla error, error page that's just like that that was at 503 timed out um, that is a learning opportunity where we could explain hey it's content address that means that if this CID did exist, it would always be the same thing, but doesn't mean that someone is currently hosting it. And we could offer next steps from that moment on, which would then turn this sad, oh, I couldn't find my thing, into a positive event. Uh, these are the highlights. Our full OKRs are in the usual spreadsheet and in a pull request, but I'm not gonna go over them all now. That has been the Bifrost team, the Archivist Infra team at your service. Woohoo, thank you, Ollie. Wunderbar. All right, moving on to package managers with Steven. Uh, okay, uh, so package managers, we have three objectives this quarter. Uh, one is to make it so that uh, package manager maintainers can, or package manager users, I guess as well, uh, can add, update, and transfer large package repositories using IPFS, basically make IPFS a viable transport for package managers. Uh, second one is to engage with package manager community and to demonstrate how IPFS actually meets their needs. So once we actually make these improvements, we have to show them that yes, we've actually improved these things. You can use IPFS, please come use it. Finally, ship release. Uh, if we don't release these improvements to the users, uh, then they aren't going to be able to use them. So it's not gonna be good. Uh, currently the releases, we'll, we'll talk about this again. Uh, so yeah, uh, the first goal, uh, update or add update and transfer. Uh, the P0 here is update, um, because generally when you're maintaining a package repository, updating and adding new packages. You're not necessarily re-adding the entire thing. At the moment, this is really tricky to do, so people just re-add the entire thing. And it's painfully slow. Um, uh, the, the second uh, priority here is fetch efficiency um, and fetch performance, uh, where if users uh, can't quickly like, fetch their packages from IPFS, 
they aren't going to bother using FS. They're just going to use the centralized transport. Uh, if it uses a ton more bandwidth than like HTTP or something like that, they're not going to use it because they don't want to waste their bandwidth. They're just going to use HTTP. Um, so this is actually targeting users, not maintainers. Uh, the third goal here is ad performance. Um, most package uh, maintainers refuse to use IPFS simply because like they try to add IPFS and it just like takes a day. Or sorry, they, they try to add the package repository to IPFS and it takes a day. And like this just isn't going to work for them. Uh, like they basically, they'll walk away before they even start. Uh, so we need to fix that. Uh, uh, the second one, the second objective again was uh, to engage and demo. Uh, basically, this is pretty obvious. Uh, when we actually make these improvements, we have to show these improvements. That's it. Uh, finally, ship a release. So releases are currently blocked on improving our testing and also improving the DHT. Uh, because like, at the moment, we have a bunch of fixes that we believe will help fix the DHT. Um, but we can't test it without just like deploying to the network. So we're currently building an internal uh, testing, like or large scale testing infrastructure um, uh, for uh, testing like large scale network changes, um, where hopefully we can spin up like 10,000 to 100,000 nodes and see what happens. Like if we run an old version of DHT on some of them, a new version of DHT on other ones, have a few of them added, all that kind of stuff, and like see like how our changes actually affect the network. Uh, once we can have this, uh, then we can finish our DHT changes. Then we can fix the, fix the DHT, then we can chip release, and then everyone will be happy. <laughs> um, at least that's the goal here. Uh, okay, that's, those are the package manager updates. Uh, the reason I brought this one up is like this, we don't actually have any strong KRs here um, uh, other than chip release, or sorry, we don't have any strong initiatives. Uh, the main goal here is to support the other teams who are working on uh, critical fixes for IPFS and to make this a piece here on our KRs. Yep, as we mentioned, Focusing on the most important area might mean uh, making some adjustments along the way, but we that's why we have the prioritization ahead of time so that we can uh, know what we need to drop when uh, push comes to shove. All right, docs UX. Waiting for yes. one of Jessica, perfect. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome. Um, hello, this is my intern. Her name is Stella and she's telling me what to say. Um, so, like everybody else, you can find all of our more detailed OKRs inside the master spreadsheet. I'm also just posting um, a link to the README of our GitHub repo because uh, we've published a condensed version of those OKRs as well as a whole bunch of supporting documents as a README of our GitHub repo. So, you can follow along there as the quarter goes on. Um, the TLDR um, on, because I think. <laughs> Like all of us, we've said, oh, well, this is a short quarter, but we want to do some really aggressive work. Um, so, so like the others, <laughs> we're also binding off a lot this quarter. Um, the TLDR on this is that in Q3, we were able to do um, a really good combination of some pretty critical foundational work, research analysis, um, as well as a bunch of sort of more pragmatic, sort of firefighting, sort of hot fix related stuff. Um, that was a really good balance. What that does mean is that that, set, that has set us up for Q4 to really get a whole lot of stuff done that's going to directly benefit our users. Um, so we're super excited about that. You know, <laughs> the bottom line of that is yes, make IPFS easier to understand and use, whatever that means. I mean, you know, <laughs> small statement, huge remit. Um, this is really sort of getting down to four key areas. For, for our OKRs. One, obviously, is launch the beta of our docs platform. Um, we did a lot of really interesting work. Um, Chris Waring led this effort and did an amazing job of um, features analysis. We put together a massive features wish list. Um, and, and Chris took apart all of the sort of leading candidates for a best fit docs platform, um, did a lot of work over the last quarter and arrived at the end of the year that we're gonna do a spike over the next couple of weeks on standing up a proof of concept in ViewPress. Um, it'll have one-to-one -one content parity of what exists on the existing docs site. So there's no new content on this beta as of yet. Uh, but the other thing we're going to use this beta for is um, to put into place a new navigational structure um, that was the result of a bunch of sort of card sorting and information architecture work that Eric Rani and I did over the quarter, um, mainly, mainly Eric, so kudos to him. Um, so we're also going to be using this, we're going to be using this for a couple of 
couple of purposes. One is to continue, obviously, to build out this this new platform, um, to have something that exists separately as a beta um, so that we're not disrupting anybody's experience in case anything goes wrong. Also using it as a test ground. Um, we're going to be accumulating. Uh, we've already got a bunch of people that we've talked to both internal and within the uh, wider developer communities. Some of our engaged partners are very keen on helping us test this platform. Um, so we have something that we can stand up as sort of a separate, almost a sandbox for testing foremost the navigational structure. Um, also some of our, fut um, our features, both um, near term and, and sort of longer term features. Um, it's, it's also going to give us an opportunity to um, flight test some of the holes in our existing content. Um, one of the things that came about as a result of this information architecture work is, you know, that also spotlighted a bunch of places where we, we know we need content. So in the short term, at least, there's going to be places where you land on this docs beta that says, hey, there's nothing here yet right now. And we're going to use those as stubs to try to see gauge people's interest. Um, there's going to be an enhanced feedback mechanism on all of our docs pages um, that will also be like, all right, there's nothing here. Well, would you like to contribute? to this, would you like us to escalate this work? Do you have comments? That sort of thing. Um, that, uh, that expanded feedback tool sort of brings me to the next section, second block on that left-hand side of your screen that says, research user needs and map out improvements. Everything we're doing here is just making sure that anything we're building on this new Docs beta platform in Q4 is backed up and validated by user testing and user feedback. Um, Primarily among that is we want to make sure that we get into place, um, decide upon and implement really good metrics for that docs beta so that we're collecting good data as we go along, um, figuring out exactly what that might mean in sort of KPI based success metrics. Um, so we're doing a really good uh, combination of both sort of passive analytics based stuff and more active user feedback, user research, user interview works. Um, that expanded feedback tool that will appear on the bottom of every single page right now you're just seeing um, we did ship in Q3 in the existing docs a thumbs up thumbs down tool on every page of the docs. That's already giving us some use, useful feedback, but we want to give people the opportunity to tell us a little bit more should they choose to engage with that tool. So that's tops on our list for for um, one big Q4 feedback mechanism. And then also um, midstream usability testing. This is, kind of, this is kind of vague right now because to be honest, these are things that are gonna crop up while we're building the platform. Um, as we're building things, we're gonna have questions that come up. We are, we've been doing a really good job over Q3 of accumulating a bunch of people that we can draw from. Um, for potential testers, both within sort of the, the core PL org, um, and then also obviously the much wider development community. Um, so so we're, we're hoping to be able to do some sort of quick and dirty user testing to get feedback as we go along and just make sure that we're continuously on the right track. Um, so that brings us to that right hand column on your slide there. Um, <laughs> and this is the core thing. If we need to improve our content. We need to improve our content based on a number of, of different different drivers. One is going to be the, the sort of more passive metrics that we've talked about. Um, one, another is going to be community input, things that the community has, has specifically highlighted as needs. Um, and then also things that we know exist, things that we inherited when we spun up this project, some sort of older longstanding issues. Um, and so that's really going to take sort of two fronts. I mean, both of them end in better content, but one is going to be fixed content that we've ID'd either by new metrics results or the community letting us know that we need to change stuff. And then also um, we wanna clear our backlog as much as possible for closing some high value issues related to stuff that we already know is a problem. Um, we hadn't been able to spin quite as hard on this as we'd hoped in Q3 because um, we spent most of Q3 um, working on hiring a new documentation and content strategist. Um, that, is, that, that process is continuing apace and um, hoping that we have a new staff member soon to be able to really affect some change on that. So uh, keep an eye on that. And then also all of that keys into um, protoschool based um, OKRs. Protoschool being sort of you know, both, both within and without the docs team, um, you know, sort of existing obviously as its own resource, but then also being very, very closely coupled um, to our docs as a whole. Um, the biggest area where protoschool and docs are overlapping in Q4 is trying to take all of this great content that, that very recently got completely um, uploaded to all of our public facing areas from IPFS camp. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're integrating that both into proto school content and then into just docs content as a whole as thoroughly as possible. Um, this Q4 
keys into some of our sort of features work here. We're investigating uh, good ways to do cross-linking, deep linking, um, some sort of taxonomy-based sharing of, um, of community-based resources for um, IPFS docs that maybe we didn't build and exist on other platforms, but we want to surface them as much as possible. That all keys into a whole bunch of sort of deeper, um, you know, there, we, have, we have 13 um, line items in our OKR. So there are not 13 things on this slide. So um, if you want to dig deeper into some of the more detailed things, because there's some, some much cooler work in there, we just shared the P0s with you here. Um, please have a look at our, uh, just, just the front page of our GitHub, our, our GitHub readme, um, GitHub slash IPFS slash docs. For those of you who might be watching and not reading, um, we welcome your feedback. You can track our progress there. Uh, any, any other questions, anything I left out? All right, wonderful. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Jessica. Awesome. Very exciting work coming here. All right, and so that concludes our, our OKRs for Q4 across all of the different working groups. Please do follow up with any um, particular captains if you have um, questions or, or discussions or want to help out with any of these things. Um, there's, there's a lot of work to do this quarter. We're trying to narrow it as much as possible, given that we know it's a short quarter. Um, but we're, we're also very excited to, to land all of the hard work that we've been um, setting ourselves up to, for in the past quarter to um, make sure that everyone can take advantage of it and that we can revel in all of the improvements we see based on all this hard work we've been putting into it. So um, huge congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Um, let's do our, our unmute and clap for all of the, the great OKR presentations across everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you.